What's going on, my creative collective? Welcome to your daily creative reading for June 13th, Jazz Heads. Yeah! Um, <laughs> uh, it's it's maybe Monday, but it's a day that ends in Y, and you're here, right? You got, you got lung in here, you got a pulse going through here, so that's a good day, my friends. Okay, so we're going to dive in. I would like to invite the angels, my spirit guides, my guardian angels, protectors, teachers, and their healing energy to this space. And I ask that it is a safe and brave space that allows for the fullest expression of our light, humanity, ascension, and healing. Okay, so sleeves up. <laughs> um, we are going to start. So I, I've had this deck for years, but I didn't use it because I thought, well, I'll read from a book. It's so nice. But this is the Postcards from Spirit deck by Colette Baron reed And I end up reading from a book anyway. So I thought um, this would be a really great uh, use of them because they have their own little thing, messages from spirit. So like direct, direct to you. <laughs> so we'll dive in here. Spirit, what messages do you have for my creative collective? Postcards from you for June 13th. Okay. Dearest you, I don't know if you want it. Does it set the mood? Well, on the back there, I'll show you that. So there's angels and cherubs. And then this here says, you are not alone. Oh, well, that's lovely. You are not alone. I quite like that. Okay. Dearest you, there are times you get lost but refuse to see your part in things. Happens to everyone. Something feels familiar but sort of off. If you're feeling confused, it's best to throw away that map you're using, which only lets you navigate based on your past experiences. That isn't what you need right now. Instead, take a deep breath and open to the truth. A desire to stay in denial means that part of you doesn't want to be responsible for the pattern that's shown up in your life. Yes, this is the right time to wake up and start again. By the way, you will always get another chance. You have unlimited chances to start again, right? Pulse, air, right? You can do that. We love you so much. We really do. Be gentle with yourself. Coming out of denial is like being temporarily blinded by super bright lights. Allow your eyes to adjust. Carry on, special one. A beautiful life awaits. Loving you so, so much. So I feel like there's a lot of, um, I'm getting imagery with this map. I'll put this over here. This this map, right? This sort of like cosmic map. And it's almost like I see the planets. This is so cool. Thank you so much, Spirit. <laughs> I see the, the planets as like stones that were skipped that just suspended in space, like just suspended in place to help us find our way back home. I don't know. I've said this in other videos. I don't fancy myself much of a star seed. Um, but then I look at like <laughs> stuff like this and I'm like, oh, and I'll look at like the mugs that I have that have like constellations on them or moons. And I'm like, oh, and just like I named my car Oberon, like it's Jupiter moon. I was like, oh, I just didn't. I, ugh, I was like, oh my gosh, it was from Shakespeare. <laughs> like, um, and I liked Obi as the name for short, O-B-I-E. But anyways, I see stuff like that and I'm like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> my, all my Uranian energy is like, oh no, I'm part of, I'm a trend. I'm part of a trend. <laughs> I want to resist them. Anyways, nonetheless, I just do feel this like cosmic stone skipping um, happening with it. I, I am still leaning into that starseed stuff, I guess. I don't know. Um, let me, there we go. Page of Swords. Actually, we'll start here and then move that over. Okay. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creators for June 13th, please? Okay, so we have the Lovers, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Ten of Wands. I'm going to put those all here. You want them separate? Okay, that's fine. I got you, Spirit. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for June 13th, please? Seven of Cups, Ten of Cups, wow. Temperance, Seven of Swords, Ace of Pentacles, Death. Yes, I love the Death card. Oh, it's so good. Mm, it's delicious. To start a Monday with that, that's perfect. Let me just do this. There's less shine. I was going to say my noise-canceling curtains. <laughs> I don't even know. I, I don't know. Um, there we go. 
noise canceling ish. I'm not going to bother with them anymore. Okay. So at the outset here, I'm getting that you're kind of starting this in like a sort of curious today's like there's quite like there's questions you're entering the week with possibly from the weekend um, or last week. But there's just like question marks that you have that you're that life has kind of left you with or that there's stuff that you're researching, things that you're trying to figure out. Um, and I think it's kind of like the choice to um, the choice to move forward with someone or on a project or the decision to take a step back and to release the frustrations about it because you're like, this is super awkward. It's just awkward and it's hard and it's like, I don't know. I'm envisioning somebody carrying too many packages out of Ikea. Like you're trying to, it's <laughs> like the way that Ikea furniture is packaged. Like it's always very long or it's <laughs> right. Like um, you could be moving, I don't know, but uh, just this image of, um, or doing a, a, an overhaul in your space. But this is like, a lot of this is is like um, it, to me it it comes across as uh, frustrated energy. Like there's things that you're carrying uh, that you may not really need to. I'm hearing use it for firewood. Yeah, use it for kindling. Like don't like it's the same things. This is this is like potential energy, right? Like I think it's kinetic energy. I don't even know. Um, we're gearing up with science programming again for the summer and that's been on my brain because of one of the jobs that I do. But this is like, it's like the potential of energy. So you can, exp the energy can be expressed through you carrying things that you don't need to, or it can be expressed through, you know, some kind of fire. Like there's different ways to use the same energy. So it really depends on how you want to channel the energy and how you want to fun. Like, what do you want? What do you want to funnel it into? Like, how do you want to use it? Cause it's really up to you. Right. And I think that's where the choice is here and it's I'm hearing that this is like a higher choice um, a higher choice for some reason this is evocative of the never-ending story and that big ass flying animal I don't know <laughs> the height of random we're gonna roll with it though uh, but that's where I think that there's like questions that you have about how to undertake this process and it's like you recognize the creative potential like there's an energy and again I use this I've used this in another reading but it's like this is hematite so don't roll it because it will make a large sound <laughs> but it's like at the top of the ramp you have the ball and then you, like what momentum picks up as it goes down the ramp um it's like you're choosing your momentum like it's like you're choosing your energetic momentum here which is delicious because, and this is so, this is, could become a tower if it goes unaddressed. This is uh, another kind of potential energy, right? But this is expansion. So what I find interesting about this is that with what is happening here with the little vignette that I'm seeing emerge in this day, um, is that there's a lot that can come of this sort of decision. And this can just be a small decision that we make today. It's like butterfly effect, the butterfly effect, blah, 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 the butterfly effect of thoughts in your own life, right? So you can feel like you're on the bottom of the wheel or you can feel like you're on the top, right? You can feel very fixed in your ideas of what destiny and fate mean, or you can be flexible with them and sort of flow with them as well, right? So there are ways that you can... Um, there are ways that you can work with this energy in a way that is is not, I think it's really just about a higher perspective, right? Which side of the wheel do you feel like you're on? Because that's a choice too, right? We, you know, fate has this, this notion of being something completely outside of our control. And I think that there are certain things that we can't control, but we can always control ourselves in response to circumstances, right? It's that Maya Angelou quote that is like, if you can't control the circumstances, then control your attitude about them, right? Because there's, there's only so much that we can do, but we can always do something with what we have. So it's like just rearranging the perspective a little bit. Uh, and the seven of cups, I'm seeing uh, puzzle pieces here. I'm not sure why puzzle pieces, um, but like awkwardly fitting ones. Like there's one. Okay, hold on. This is the protagonist position. So I feel like maybe there are a bunch of pieces of yourself that you're seeing or pieces of, of what you're, what you're looking for. Um, aspects of um, this could be I'm seeing to-do list too so there's many iterations or, or interpretations of this energy um, but I'm seeing that there are things that you might have been kind of seeing outside of yourself and you're assessing how to how what to do with this because these are all potential energies right these are all potential energies look at that 
some of them love, some of them sweet, tender, tornadic, <laughs> right? Um, you know, the wreath that has its a whole wealth of symbolism. And then, you know, like there's like advocation or advocation, she's advocacy. And um, then there's like this kind of snake energy, which is a creative energy. Like it's, there's all of these different energies that you're seeing as potentials. But I feel like, and the interesting thing is the antagonist position is coming through as the 10 of cups. And I feel like there's a way that you may have felt that this was kind of a distraction, um, that love was a distraction. But I think that what you're seeing, and I'm seeing this through the Ace of Pentacles and the death here, is that there's more to that story. Because I think that the challenge is the balance, right? It's coming into balance. Um, and a side note, I love that rainbow shirt. Happy Pride Month. <laughs> My voice squeaked, so it didn't really sound like much, but that's fine, right? So there's this balance here, this beautiful balance. Uh, and for that to be your challenge tells me that it's like balancing perspective, like making room for romance. But this could also be balancing what's happening with creative projects or work that you're doing. This can be balancing all of those things together. So as those things come together in this 10 of cups, like what does each cup represent to you? Because there's seven here, right? So there's three more. But what do all of them represent? These can all represent different energies that you're looking to integrate into your life, that you're looking to bring together on a project. These can even represent people, the energies of people that you have to assemble if you're a project manager, blah, manager, oh my god, <laughs> manager or program manager. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> um, you know, when your face gets ahead of your brain, like that's just that's what happened. Um <clears throat> <laughs> so I feel like the balance here, the, the interesting thing is not to let this, the seven of swords is like that sort of that thieving energy, like the taking of energy. And I feel like in this sense, I feel like there might've been a way that you were giving so much and that was kind of throwing things out of balance as well. Because like this also strikes me as a card of you having to make all the decisions, like you know, when does the garbage go out? When does the recycling go out? Are you the one who knows when all of those are? Do you know when everything is expiring in the house? Do you know when everything needs to happen and what cycles it, when, why, how, where? Like, are you that person who knows like your friend's insurance renewal dates? And like, for some reason it comes up, like it's an energy, right? Um, I'm not saying I'm that friend, but like, I'm saying that there are, <laughs> are still hints of that now. Uh, but um, but that's like this overgiving, right? Like when you're the one that everyone turns to in a specific context, like a job, chef's kiss, beautiful. That means you're a manager. You're managing something. If that's your role, even better. If not, reassess and come back into balance. But I'm seeing that there's this sort of, that's maybe the energy really that I'm feeling here of the frustration aside from the other storylines that we got. Because this, the Ten of Cups shouldn't really be. The Ten of Cups is an antagonist when you are in an energy of doing too much for too little with too few resources returned. So it can throw you into this energy of being unable to recognize what you want or what's best for you. Um, so I think that there's like a pause here. And I think that's the, the reason why the balance is the challenge, because I think people might make you feel like you're taking from them. Um, it might make you feel like you're taking from them or like there's a way that you're not giving or you'll feel like you're like there's something that you should be doing differently when realistically it's okay to let other people take responsibility for themselves and their lives so that you can stand fully and completely in your own, right? We are whole and complete, just we are whole and complete on our own. And it's, it's sort of like there's being helpful and then there's being like the friend that people only want to see when they need reminders of things, right? And that was like, that's hard too. So it's about going easy on yourself um, because then it's it's like, that's, I think this is a shift that is indicative of bigger things. Like in the death card here, again, my absolute favorite card in the deck, um, which sounds morbid, but if you know the meaning of the death card, you'd be like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But it's also this like, in the background here, there's like a new day dawning. And I think that that's really, this here is this this fresh release and reprieve. Interestingly enough as well, um, this reminds me of, um, so in Canada, I think in Commonwealth countries, um, although col colonized countries, I'm not sure how to word it in a way that is respectful of um, its colonial imperatives and history. So forgive me for that. Um, I know that's a, a, a sort of discursive transgression to specifically indigenous communities. So just bear with me. I'm trying to think of that as I go. And that doesn't excuse it, but I'm just wanting to make sure that I point my, call myself in on that. Um, but there's the poppy on November 11th. Um, so Remembrance Day and poppies are very popular, uh, but there's also the white poppy. And that's what this reminds me of. And increasingly, it's becoming the symbol of peace. Um, 
you know, when I was in my 20s, people saw it and were like, that's super disrespectful. And they thought it was, you know, just it, it disrespected veterans and what they put forth for a war that they did, they, they were conscripted into. Um, but now it's kind of gaining ground. And even veterans are saying, yeah, that makes a lot like it makes more sense. So I almost feel like this is like, um, transforming this, maybe, maybe a feeling of being at war with yourself and what you wanted. Um, because there is an offer here. So there's like this transformation of that energy. And you're just like, no, forget it. Like not forget it to the opportunity. You're saying forget it to the ways that you've um, been in situations with this seven of swords. And these things creep up multiple times in a lifetime, right? Like we think we're good with something and then it shows up again. <laughs> That's an, the official sound of that, uh, that experience, by the way. Um, but then it like, it, it comes up again. Um, and I'm feeling a bit like, I'm feeling a little bit like this is this, it's like a story of like, when we have things that are a to-do list that feels like too much and it's kind of right on time for a Saturn retrograde, right? Like we're pulling things back. We're pulling back the tension of things. And this is helping us to intention and discipline, like the sort of really like laying on things and nose, uh, nose to the grindstone. Um, I did look up the etymology of that phrase and it is not indeed problematic. It had to do more with, um, industrial revolution and, um, the ways that workers were treated in factories. So fun fact, if you're wondering, um, I like to look up the phrases that I use or that are common. Uh, it's just sort of a praxis of mine to make sure that it's inclusive and that it respects the energetics of the present moment so that we are not bringing this sort of history of, um, harm done right? We're healing, we're healing timelines with language. That's really what it's doing. Um, so nonetheless, uh, I feel like this Saturn retrograde has been like, it's, it's kind of, I know I felt like this too, where I'm just like pushing in really hard at things and I don't mind hard work. I, I feel like it's very rewarding. Hard work is work, right? Like it's not bad. You can get a lot from it, but does it have to be, um, does it have to feel that way? No, it can feel expansive, it can feel like options. It can feel like joy. It can feel like new, right? So these are all themes that are probably coming up in relation to this uh, the Saturn retrograde period where it's like this lightening up of things, this breath of fresh air and new information coming in about that that is ultimately allowing us to transform perceptions, beliefs, patterns, programming, templating, whatever you want to call it. Um, and it's ultimately bringing us into a sense of balance with ourselves. And I feel like this is really the story of being inside integrity with ourselves. Would not shock me if the Justice Guard came out here. Um, so with that being what it is, let's start to clarify this here. Um, I'm going to use this little, this little deck. I've used it mostly with friends and not for reading. So we'll see how this, uh, how this squares and how it works with this reading. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for June 13th, please? Remember too, I just got this. Uh, thank you so much, Spirit. It's like, um... To-do lists are meant to empower you. To-do lists are meant to empower you. To-do lists are not meant to create more more stuff on your plate, right? I used to do this <laughs> in, <laughs> even into my early 30s. Like I would do this where I would be like, oh, yes, I am absolutely going to um, do all the things. I have this giant to-do list. And sometimes I'd be up at night like early and worrying with stuff. And my process started to become just write it all down on a to-do list and I would fall back asleep. No problem. Um, but I realized after a while that the to-do list is indicative of like, do you believe that you deserve to just rest? Do you believe that? Because then it's like your relationship to to-do list changes because sometimes we put things on to-do list just to cross it off because we need that feeling because we're missing the feeling of, of feeling accomplished. We're missing the feeling of um, efficiency. We're missing the feeling of being organized and the way that that has translated into a paradigm or template about us and, and how good we are as people. So are we using to-do lists just to like check shit off and be like, yeah, it's done. Or are we doing it as a way to organize and, and to, to streamline, I guess, or well, to systematize really like as someone with ADHD systems are everything. That's how I function without, um, you know, a need for medication and things like that. It's, it, it is everything, right? I know other people have talked about it, but really, you know, any book that I'd read when I was in my 20s about ADHD and then in my 30s, um, it was really about systems, right? And and to-do lists can be a function of getting things done, but they are also, they can also enable you as well, right? So just keep that in mind because I'm feeling like big to-do list energy on these cards or off of these cards. So yeah, 
keep that in mind, my daily creatives, because, uh, you know, functioning from a creative place, even if it's art that we do for the joy of it, we can still get locked into this to do list thinking and this mentality of like, I have to get it done when y- you you need to do you. What are what's the done that you're reaching for? Right. What's the done that you're reaching for? So we have the King of Swords. The Seven of Cups, unsurprising given the Seven of Cups here. The Magician. Yeah, I think this is the real clarity here. This is the real clarity about this is like the to-do list, right? This is like big to-do list energy. And what I'm getting is that this is, um, it's like the clarity arrives with this King of Swords here. But it may not seem, it may not have shown up as it appeared. The card has, there's like a mask Somebody's wearing a mask in it. And I think that it's like it may not have shown up as it initially was meant or as you thought it might. And then the seven of cups is like there's that's where this option energy and this possible overwhelm and confusion is coming from. So it's just about remembering that your power lay in your direction. Like this is like singular energy, right? There's a book called The One Thing and it's like focusing on one thing at a time so that you can and you so you can make progress with that one thing and then yes weave it into all of these other beautiful things but make sure that you're paying respect to and for the energy that you have to do one thing at a time right that's where the to-do list can almost be an enabling thing where like yeah we're doing one thing at a time and like there's a book called the checklist manifesto which was excellent and certainly like was um revolutionary in terms of medical stuff at the time that it was released and maybe not revolutionary but certainly groundbreaking um and it it does have some merit to staying organized but i think it can enable us if we are in this like constant go mode where we feel like we are uh, at the hands of fate so we're trying to take control when what we need to do is to come into balance because we don't want our happiness to be in the antagonist position right we don't want it to be outside of ourselves which might make us feel a little bit like the page like the student like we don't have any idea what we're doing um, but the real choice here again I go back to it the real choice is are we going to choose to operate from frustration or are we going to choose to operate with open arms and you know the nakedness is the vulnerability right as that's the totality of your vulnerability working here and let it work in your favor so then we also have the knight of cups and the eight of swords yeah so this is like how are you offering yourself in situations where you may have felt particularly confused or not set aside but like just confused confused about what direction to take because again to-do lists can streamline specific activities they streamline the specifics but are you in the big picture or are you wrapped up in the specifics because they feel safer Holy channeling. Okay. Spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives for June 13th? Knight of Pentacles on the Page of Swords, Temperance, and the Seven of Swords. Yeah, so this to me is an energy of... Um, this is like streamlining your energy. The Knight of Pentacles is like your energy goes to one place. It doesn't go to multiple places at the same time because that's like the slow thing, right? Like, and I've mentioned her before, but I had a teacher in high school who was like, a, she kind of was like a big sister or an aunt or a parent, I guess. Um, and she really helped me get through a ton of shit. Um, and it just, it was, I'm, I'm still to this day grateful for her. And I, we, we do keep in touch. Our religious views differ, but I, I don't know that I would have survived high school without her. Um, so this Knight of Pentacles energy is something, it reminds me of a quote that she said, which was, um, that still stuck with me is mark your progress, not your perfection. Right. So it's like to do lists. I don't know why to do lists are so prescient in this reading. I guess sometimes we start the day or the week with them, right? Like we start our Mondays with like, this is what I have to do this week. So I don't know if spirits like calling us in gently. Um, my days are, my weeks are usually rearranged differently. So my Sundays are different days of the week. Um, although, um, yeah, that's, yeah, like they're different days. So that can be the case for some, but, um, I, I feel like there's a, a way that you're marking your progress, not your perfection, because that might've made you feel like you had to do all of these things because it was really just masking imperfections that you really didn't feel great about. Right. Could be, um, and not just recognizing them, but like actually sit with them and work with them and do things that remind you of how loved you are and how great you are and how Ace of Pentacles your energy is, right? How Ace of Pentacles your energy is, because I don't know that we, we understand it enough, but like people see us through this lens of the Ten of Cups. 
it's taken me some time to really fully understand that, you know, like we are a 10 of cups to somebody, right? We're not, we're not like uh, a devil energy. We're not like, you know, the, the energy of like, I'm going to fall madly in bed with that person. That might be the case, but like a 10 of cups is like, is, is like a happiness card. And I feel like the things in our lives, we can sometimes assign these weird ways of, of seeing them or imagining that they, they view us through this lens of like profound incompletion that is deeply harmful where, um, the, the, the happiness, like, I don't know. I had an epiphany this weekend, like last weekend about, um, well, like the, you know what I mean? Sunday, Saturday, Friday, um, just about the fact that like, not just that you're lovable, but that like you are, you're cared for more deeply that you know, than you know, and then it's possible for people and projects to love you just for you, not because of your body, not because of like other stuff that is an important part of it and a fun part of it, but it's just like, there's so much more to that, right? Like, I don't know. I think that that's part of the marking your progress and not your perfection, because when you're marking your perfection, it's like, you're trying to prove something. You're trying to prove something. Knight of Pentacles, Ten of Pentacles, yeah, that's, that's, this is like this, it's like a shift in investment, right? It's a shift in investment. And it's not that you're investing in yourself. It's like, it's this shift in the Ten of Cups where it's like you're seeing that you are a Ten of Cups to someone. You are a Ten of Cups on a work project, in your job, in your career, with your creative, you know, <laughs> with what you do creatively. You are a Ten of Cups to those things. And it's when you see yourself like that, that's when the real investment starts. The Ten of Pentacles, that's when the real investment starts. And the Knight of Pentacles is this indicative energy or sorry, uh, demonstrative energy of the, the pace of the Ten of, of Pentacles isn't fast. It's not necessarily fast, but it is like, it's, it's like the pace of this. It's like this pace. It's the transformative pace, right? For some reason, what just came to mind was slime mold. <laughs> um, cause slime mold is, um, it's, it can go from a singular single cell organism to a multi-celled organism, which is super cool unto itself. Like it's a genius or a thing in nature, but it, it people think that it like uh, just eats everything where it goes and it kind of does like it helps to decompose things. So it like actually moves not quickly, you know, um, but it's just, I, I saw it when I was up in Algonquin park, um, last summer, I want to go back there this summer so badly. Oh my goodness. But, um, yeah, I just, it's like, I saw it when I was on a hike there and it was just so, um, I feel like it was really, it was interesting to me. It was interesting to me to think about and just to think with slime mold. And I feel like that's kind of the pace, right? That's the pace of the death card. Slow and steady, but absolutely freaking magical. So, Ten of Pentacles. We also have the Four of Cups and the Queen of Pentacles. Yeah, and the Nine of Pentacles. Yeah, this is like, I feel like you might have been in this kind of bored energy. Like you're tired of this maybe non-committal energy. You're tired of um, people when they say things that they they mean, like they, they say stuff and they're like, oh, I meant that. And they really didn't. Um, that can be quite challenging and tough. So you just kind of went into this Nine of Pentacles energy. But I think that you're rediscovering the joy of giving. And I think that's part of this choice where you're stepping into a kind of power that comes from understanding how the wheel works. Like it doesn't turn on its own. Like it's not, things aren't going to find you because you're just doing whatever, right? Like you're, you're actively engaged in the creation of your own reality, be it through joyous thoughts and focusing on, you know, um, Wayne Dyer talked about the power of intention and I have his card deck <laughs> still. Um, but it, it just, it, it's like when you, it's like focusing on that intention piece, right? Those intentions that you, that you set, that is what makes the wheel turn, right? That's what makes the wheel turn. And that you're part of that. Like you're an active participant. It is a participatory shape. <laughs> it is a participatory thing, Right. The Wheel of Fortune, the Page of Swords, the Three of Cups, the Five of Pentacles, and the Two of Wands. Yeah, that's like, and this rest, oh, beautiful, this Four of Wands. That's like the healing card here, which is like a healing perspective, a healed perspective. So there's the Page of Swords and the Three of Cups, and the Page of Swords is already here, which tells me that this is like, you're getting information from watching the way other people do things. But I think that that has possibly thrown you into this place of lack because you're learning from other people, maybe you know, with this page of swords, but you're also, I think you're also seeing that as like what you lack, but that's like 
where you will be, right? I've said it before in comment sections and whatnot, but I feel like when people are jealous, jealousy is really just a preview of where you could be if you directed your energy because you wouldn't see something specific. You wouldn't see the assemblage of that energy in a very real and tangible form unless it was something that was possible for you. So the question is not, is that actually real? Could that actually? Yes, because it's real for someone else. The reality, the thing that you have to reach for is how the hell do you make that happen in your life? Even if you don't know, you just have to take a single step and then another single step and then you might take two steps steps backward, but then you take three steps forward and you get there eventually, right? Eventually. And it's finding stories like that. It's finding the stories of the long tack. It's finding stories of like 30, 50 year marriages and reading about those. It's immersing yourself in the stories of entrepreneurs or YouTubepreneurs or content creators or writers or uh, authors or artists or, you know, teachers or whomever, wh however that, whatever that applies to you for. It's finding those stories of the long take, right? Oh, I have, <laughs> um, I was cooking something and it's, uh, I'm going to go grab that momentarily, but this, I think this energy is really uh, a healing perspective. It's healing what's possible. The two of wands and the four of uh, swords. This is like healing the perspective of what's possible. And just, I almost see like this is like letting the bad stuff, like, but it's like a smoke, like it's sacred smoke. Like you're letting that clear. You're letting that clear. So let's clarify this ten of wands and the seven of cups, please. Um... You know what I'm going to do? My darling daily creatives, I'm just going to go take that out of the oven. Uh, I'm not going to edit this out. <laughs> uh, I'm just making lunch right now for the next couple of days for work. So give me two shakes. I will be right back. And we're back. <laughs> oh, that took no time at all. Yeah, I'm one of those nerds. I like to plan my meals ahead and I like have them all mapped out and stuff because I just don't like the traps of drive throughs and all of that stuff because it's so easy, right? Like it's so easy to be like, well, I have so much on this to-do list and that drive throughs right there. But then you feel like crap for the next like week, at least energetically. Um... Okay, so Ten of Wands, Seven of Cups, Ace of Pentacles. Yeah, the, a lot of repeating energy here. Ace of Pentacles, the Devil, the Star, Seven of Wands, Nine of Wands. Yeah, I think this is really about healing your... Um, <laughs> This, the devil energy strikes me as like the to-do list for all the wrong reasons. And I think that's where when things would come across your path, you might have gotten very confused so that instead of allowing them to heal you in this star energy, instead of allowing them to heal you, you might have seen them as opportunities to um, demonstrate or to, to like, it's like they, with the, all these attachments that you would build around them from the ego, it's like the to-do list is in service to the ego as opposed to your flourishing, right? And this to me, like the, just the patterns on this strike me as very flourishing energy, right? Very flourishing energy. So it's like, how are you using those things? And, um, it's not just about productivity because like we can get a ton of stuff done. We can get more done in a day than you think. And like, as someone with ADHD, I like one of the superpowers of it is being able to do two things at once. Like I can read two books in a day if I really need to. And that's like, that's not to be like, I am amazing, but it's just the way that your brain works. Three, 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 three on the time. What the F every single reading I've done lately, three, 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 three. Um, but it's, um, and I, I know I, I've looked up the number alignment, but yeah, it's, I, I think it's, um, this is about healing our relationship to the to do's that we create when new oppor when opportunity knocks, like when opportunity knocks, how are we making a task of it for ourselves in a way that throws us into this devil energy, right? Like, look at that woods, that reminds me of cedar trees when they grow too close together in a kind of thicket. 
um, when they grow too close together in a kind of thicket, it blocks out any growth from underneath because the density of the branches make it so that photosynthesis can't happen for the undergrowth or the understory. So it creates this like spooky vibe <laughs> when what's really happening is just there's no growth because it's not conducive to it. Um, so it's almost like that's where it's like you're kind of squeezing out the potential for any real creativity or spark or life, like the you in what you're doing. It's not that it can't emerge, but that it throws you into this like of energies where you're like, what do I choose here? Like, what's what? What do I want? What do I want? Like, because you haven't seen the light, like not the light as in like go towards the light, but like you haven't seen the opportunity that situations can present because you're very caught up in the death in the death in the devil energy. And I like the death card here is what I was thinking. Um, again, my brain got ahead of my face where it's like the death is the transformation of that energy into a realization that there's a better way to do things, right? We can we can use all these fun, you know, project management lingo and all of that stuff. But if the, if the you isn't in what you're doing, what is it for then, right? Like, what is it for? And how is it supporting your life? How is it supporting what you do? Because something I figured out a long time ago with content is that it has to support something. So like even on this channel, doing these readings and things like that, there's a strategy that's starting to build in the background that they are in service to for, you know, long term helping other people through this work, right? So it's like everything, every little thing has to make sense in the big picture. And if it doesn't, how is it helping you? And if it doesn't, do you want it there? Right? This is it, it's not about being like, controlling or like ruthlessly looking at your life and you know like burning things through it's not like that it's really like how are you honoring yourself with your every day right how are you doing that for me it was you know at one point when my autoimmune stuff was all up and not great I was using all the time that I had during pandemic layoffs into fitness rest relaxation and and cultivating a habit and it, it really did it took more than 30 days right it took about three or four months for it to really anchor in and changing a lot of habits at one time um, in service to that so it's like this that was in 2020 um so it's it's really about looking at how everything plays together and that's where probably the puzzle pieces came in, right? Everything fits because then when everything fits in terms of your own personal experiences, you are whole and complete. You're whole and complete. And you know what happens when that when when you're whole and complete, you can call in another person or people if you're polyamorous who are whole and complete indeed as well, right? Um and so this 7 of wands and um the seven of wands and the nine of wands, I think, are about, um, this strikes me as a bit of defensive, like, it's like protecting, protecting your space, protecting your space, I think, seven of wands and nine of wands, seven of wands in the traditional rider weight is like the, the person with the, the, the one wand and they're holding off the six. Um, and then the nine of wands is the, the sort of defensiveness, um, usually, I mean, it can be, but it can also just be a sense of pride about what you've completed and done. Um, but I feel like this is really more so the story of like, you're protecting your peace. You're protecting your peace by approaching the way you do things slightly differently. So let's pull this up here. Ten of cups, spirit, what messages do you have for my daily creatives, please? For June 13th, ten of cups, death, again, temperance, again, three of swords, seven of swords, the fool. Yeah, I, I think that today it's really about, it's like, I don't think today is like hardcore planning, but I think that this is really just about looking at what you want and, and kind of being unafraid to go for it. Um, and I think that is that starting place, that starting place allows all of these other pieces to start to come to you, right? So we have the death card here, but look at that. Like, I love this. It just the death card is so beautiful, right? It's just, oh, I could go on for days. Because um, I feel like it's like, fire and water and passion and transformation it's like i don't know anyways temperance there's uh so this is also here this is showing up as the challenge and i think this is the transformation of the challenge and ever interesting that the transformation of the challenge is the ten of cups that was showing up as the antagonist so this is almost like a case of the 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 challenge of balance kind of being not the full story like that was part of the the challenge but the real challenge is this ten of cups here that you're allowing in right you're allowing your joy and you're seeing that you are a ten of cups for someone possibly or people or on work projects like you know what I mean so um, it's almost like I just heard right relationship with yourself 
So uh, three of swords, I think that is this kind of transformation of pain, right? And not trusting because of that, not trusting because of it. Uh, maybe I'm hearing letdowns and expectations. So that could be something to do with the standards that we've created based on things that we, you know, the ego attached us to that we're pulling back from and really understanding we're keeping us from this 10 of cups because it created a standard, not just for other people, but for ourselves that we had to live up to that we couldn't because we're not here to live like that. Right. Um, and then the seven of swords again, and the fool. And I think that's where it's like, despite feeling like you might be taking from folks, despite feeling like you might be, um, like there might be a way that people will say, oh, well, that's like when people feel like they're losing something because you're no longer overgiving, because you're no longer putting yourself out there in a massive way, they can try and make it seem like you're taking from them. But really, this is just about realigning boundaries to protect yourself because you deserve that. You know, you deserve to go to bed, not like falling over and keeling over exhausted, but to have some life left in you so that if you picked up a book and wanted to read, you could do that for more than 10 minutes right? I've been there. <laughs> I've been there. And it's, it's okay to protect that space for yourself, right? Because it's like, it's not even, I don't know. Your energy is really important because I feel like there's a journey that you're about to embark upon this week or that will arrive on your doorstep this week. And you're going to want to, um, have enough journey to have enough journey. Oh my goodness. Have enough energy to discern, uh, details about this journey. So, uh, I'm going to pull from the notes from the Universe on Love and Connection deck, but I'm only going to pull one because we had that beautiful postcard from Spirit at the beginning. Sometimes the good is hidden. Yeah. So it's, I think this is about trusting your instincts and understanding that there's, you got to save some fuel for the journey here with that fool card. You got to leap, but there has to be some energy to it, right? And I almost see, so this is like, I think about the gas masks and the, um, the, the gas mask, the, you got to put your own oxygen mask on, on the airplane first. Right. And I almost see this like life preserver here as like, you have to tend to your own, um, I was going to say lifesavers, uh, <laughs> Um, I'm not one for candy, but you know, like it's, yeah, it's like you have to sort of save yourself first. And again, if you're looking for a relationship and that's, what's brought you here, this, like the 10 of cups is like you whole and complete all in your own. Right. I make decisions from a place of intuition and power. Yeah. So I feel like this week is, I'm, I would not be shocked if in other readings this week, we see the judgment card. Um, but my daily creatives, this is your reading for uh, June 13th. Thank you so much for watching. If this resonated, please like subscribe. It really helps me to grow this channel. And if you're joining me here from my subscriber list, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate you being here uh, and for your support as well. So um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and there are uh, other ways you can connect with me on the channel. So check that out. But if this is where we part, my darling daily creatives, I hope that wherever this finds you on the time-space continuum, morning, afternoon, or night, it finds you very, very well. Take care, my darlings.